I'd like you to imagine a world with a tutor for every child. I'd like you to imagine a world with an adaptive textbook, responsive to every student, understanding their strengths and weaknesses, a living, breathing book that can guide them on their educational journey. I want you to imagine a world where these resources are available to every child, regardless of their wealth, where they grew up, or their background. My name is Alex Jenkins, and I'm the director of the WA Data Science Innovation Hub. And our remit is to really educate people about artificial intelligence and what it might mean for the future. Now, there are some really dangerous use cases for this technology, but it also is a very exciting time, and I want to talk to you about some of the positive things that we can do in this space. So first, I think it's important to really understand what AI is. What, is, what does it mean? Artificial intelligence is intelligence, the processing and synthesis of information, but done by a machine. Generative AI is just an AI that makes something, sound, images, or text. So let's have a look at some examples. Hello, my name is Barack Obama. I'd like to say hello to everyone here at TEDxPerth today. I'd also like to say hi to my good friends at the WA Data Science Innovation Hub. They really know their stuff. Today's topic is an important one. How do we deal with the future of education in a world with generative AI? We now have the technology that allows machines to create things that are indistinguishable from a human's creative process. This presents both incredible problems and incredible opportunities. Today, I'd like you to imagine a future where every child has access to a world-class education regardless of their wealth, location, gender, or background. Now that's an idea worth sharing. Now, I'm going to surprise some of you. That wasn't actually Barack Obama. That was created with a sample of Obama's voice taken from speeches. And then I entered in a text prompt about what I wanted him to say. And it was synthesized with his intonation, his voice. Scary technology in some ways, but also some amazing use cases. Let's look at another one. Image th synthesis. We can create an image just by creating a text prompt. Now, this, I've looked at dozens of these, and this one was one of my favorite. I think it just demonstrates an incredible understanding of what AI can do. Does anyone want to hazard a guess of the text prompt that was used to create this? An ancient Egyptian painting depicting an argument over whose turn it is to take out the trash. Isn't that amazing? It just really demonstrates that kind of domestic, you know, back and forth. This is a technique called in-painting, done by uh, my designer, Karen. She started with a robot and grew the picture using text prompts to a universe of artificial intelligence. I think it's a beautiful picture. And of course, ChatGPT. ChatGPT is based on technology called large language models. Now, for a long time, people have been trying to make technology that allows you to converse with a computer. But in 2017, an architecture called the Transformer was created. And this really supercharged the creation of the technology that led to ChatGPT. For the first time, we have AI that we can talk to, and it will change the way that we interface with machines and the types of things that we can do with computers. But there are some downsides here. AI alignment and safety are incredibly important. How do we ensure that the AIs that we create are aligned with the needs of humans? And how do we ensure that they are safe to use 
and that the technology is not abused. Now, when ChatGPT was released, the first thing that the education department did here was ban the use of this. And they did this because any student could go home and write an essay on any topic in history, do their problem solving for their maths, write English assignments, anything you like. So the education department had to deal with this technology in any way that they could. But I'd like you today to think about this technology beyond just plagiarism. Where could this technology guide us into the future? Now, in order to do so, I think we need to understand where was the origin of the classroom. Now, the classroom model as we know it, it date ba dates back to the Industrial Revolution. So for the first time, a class of children were brought together with a teacher so that the students could become literate, be able to add and subtract numbers, and work in these factories in this uh, quickly changing society that was happening at the time. It was really the first time we, had, as a society, had taken it upon, us, uh, upon ourselves to educate all children. Since then, it has served us very well, but there are some shortcomings. This man is Sal Khan, and in 2008, he founded something called the Khan Academy. It is an online resource of lectures, videos, and exercises designed to provide high-quality educational materials for anyone on Earth. It is an amazing resource. Sal Khan started talking about some of the issues that we have with the standard classroom model. Some of the ways that we teach children tend to leave some of them behind. I want to give you some example of this, and in particular an area that's very close to my heart, mathematics. When we learn mathematics, we learn on building blocks and foundations. We start with the simple things, arithmetic, fractions, and then we build up into more and more complex topics. Now, when we learn these things in the classroom, sometimes we might study them for two to three weeks, we'll do a test, and even if we only studied 60 or 70 percent, we move on to the next topic. So what's the impact of that? Let's have a look. Let's sort of weave a thread through our mathematical learning. What happens when we do this in the classroom? So we see the students learning arithmetic first, all moving at the same pace, fractions, then numbers, onto more and more complex topics. Not everyone masters the material before they move on to the next topic, and that is a terrible thing. Children lose confidence, they don't understand the material, and eventually most students throw their hands in the air and say, this is too much, I can't do it. They lose confidence in themselves and they say, I can't do maths. And that, to me, is a terrible thing. There is an alternative way, and this has been proposed for a long time, many decades. It's called the mastery model. Sal Khan talked about this as well. This is an educational paradigm where we don't move on to the next topic until we have mastered the current one. Sounds great, and there are a lot of positive things about this model, but it's never really been possible to implement as a society, we do not have the resources to provide that many educational assistants, that many teachers, to allow every student to educate themselves at their own pace. With a tutor for every child, we can do this model. And we can use AI to provide a tutor for every child. So, what might this look like? As simple as a question, and you can do this today. I don't understand how to add two fractions when the bottom bit is different. Might be a question that a student can ask. The AI or ChatGPT will provide you with an answer. 
go into depth, provide examples, create quizzes for you. It's fantastic. But this is just today. What else might we do? Well, we might look at our work. This will be possible very soon. Show the AI some working, a sum, a problem that you have done. It can point out where the problems are. It can guide you through this learning process. In the next stage in the AI's iteration, the ability to create images itself. I want to learn about Venn diagrams. Show me an example. Wouldn't this be the best textbook in the world? Something that responds to your questions through text, through graphics, through diagrams. We really could provide a tutor for every child in this manner. Now, I want to emphasize this is not the end of the teacher. Teachers are indispensable. I had some fantastic teachers growing up. They inspired me to take the paths that I did. I want to empower teachers with this model to be able to focus on inspiring students, nurturing students, managing the learning outcomes of a whole class. I'd like teachers to think about this as what would you do if you had 30 virtual educational assistants, because that is the world we are moving towards. And for all the teachers in the room, this means no more marking. The AI will assess each student. It is a very attractive model. So ChatGPT is just the beginning. We will quickly see these AIs develop to be more multimodal. And that means we can interact with them in more ways that are more natural to us. The next thing we'll see is these AIs be able to understand imagery and then create that imagery themselves. And then further on with that, imagine having a history lesson from Obama, a music lesson from Lady Gaga. This is the kind of technology that will be possible very soon. I'd like you to consider what your children would do with a tutor that could provide them any kind of learning journey they like. And so if we move to this mastery model, what do we hope to achieve? So again, let's have a look at how our students progress. They might progress at different speeds, but that's OK. We don't have to all move on to the next topic at the same time. I'm not suggesting that everyone is be going to become a mathematical genius, but I do believe that our students are let down currently in terms of their mathematical education. And I hope with a model like this, we can just push everyone forward so they have a much deeper understanding of some of these topics. I believe that a tutor for every child will allow every child to reach their potential. And as a society, I think that we owe that to our children. Wow, Alex, what an amazing and inspiring talk. You sure know this artificial intelligence stuff well. What a guy. I look forward to an AI version of me teaching American history to the next generation of students. Such a time to be alive. Goodbye, TEDx Perth. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Alex Jenkins.